The Toyota Prado has long been the go-to SUV for Australian families that need a comfortable, practical, seven-seat family off-roader. But now there's a new kid in town. It's an SUV that on paper at least matches the Prado for user friendliness, family functionality and diesel efficiency. In fact, it's an SUV that might even be more practical for Australian families. Why? Because it was designed here. Yeah mate, it's the Ranger based Ford Everest and Ford tells us it's here to take on the almighty Toyota Prado. This Everest is the top spec titanium. It's priced at just under $77,000. Features a 3.2 litre, five cylinder diesel engine that makes 143 kilowatts of power and 470 Newton meters of torque. And on this side, we've got the VX Prado, which is the penultimate Prado in the range, second from the top. It's got a slightly smaller 2.8 litre turbo diesel engine, makes 130 kilowatts and 450 Newton meters. Both have six-speed automatic transmissions, constant all-wheel drive, and most importantly, both have seven seats and weigh a little over two tonnes. Now, the Ford Ranger, uh, sorry, the Everest is all new, isn't it? I, I see what you've done there. What? Ranger. It's, it's an Everest. Well, it is based on the Ranger, is it not? Okay, hold on. Let's clear this up. It is based on the Ranger, but aside from the chassis, the engine, and the driveline, mm -hmm. the suspension and the interior are different. Speaking of which, that really hasn't changed much since 2009. And aside from that Bain Mars grill, it's the exact same Prado it's always been. The grill is a little bit love it or hate it, but being around since 2009 is not quite as bad as the previous Prado, which had been around since about 1975 from memory. However, this is new. It's got a new engine, a 2.8 litre turbo diesel. We're off-road in its natural habitat. So you're gonna get in the second row where you belong. And I'm gonna show you how the current champ gets the job done off-road. Okay, Paul, so as we know, this is the number one seller. Everybody loves a Prado and there's good reason for it. It's comfortable, it's practical. How are you feeling back there off-road? Well, we're about to enter the most terrifying part of our four-wheel drive course, in my opinion, which is the big uh, sort of seesaw where we drop the car on an incredible angle. And I've got to say that, that the Prado feels natural in this element. I just think it does everything so easily. That's the key for the Prado and it always has been. It's just effortless, especially in this tough stuff off-road. The last time I was on this, I opened a door in it in a different brand of car and I couldn't close it because the chassis was slightly bent. So that's the driver's door open. Yep. Closed Look up. Look at that, not nice a problem at all. Tight. We've got a pretty steep decline here, mate. So um, let's see how that feels in the back seat. Yeah, hold on to something. <laughs> This is real steep stuff too, so most punters are going to look at a hill like this and say, ooh, I'm not driving down there, um, but we're, we're doing it quite comfortably Almost here. Critical. In, yeah, quite comfortably here in the Prado and doing it really, really easily. And we're about to climb up the other side just as easily, I would assume. Now, mate, the question I've got to ask here, it feels rough there when you're on the brake pedal. Look, I've got to be honest, I don't think the feeling of these brakes is absolutely ideal for this kind of off-road stuff. It's a little touchy. Oh, we might need low range there. <laughs> keep in it, keep yeah. in it, son. Oh no, we're up, there we go. I'm keen for us to cross that river, which looks quite swollen at the moment, <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah, it's been raining overnight. Let's go and have a look at that. Mate, this is, this is much deeper than the last time we yeah, were here. Yeah, it is. We did a little recce the other day and it wasn't quite this deep. It is very steep coming down in here too. So let's Jeez. go in Look gently once we touch that toe ball down, in gently, gentle speed. And I out can the actually other side. feel the water under my feet. Yeah, that <laughs> is going to be the big difference between the wading depth of the Prado and yep. the Everest. All right, well, we've done plenty of off-road uh, bashing around now. What we need to do is have a bit of a look at how this performs on-road. So let's head for some seal stuff and we'll check that out. So Paul, 80 kilometre an hour country road. We've been wafting between 80 and 100 at the moment and wafting is the right word because let's be honest no one's ever accused the Prado of having fantastic on-road handling dynamics. No look while it is comfortable to sit back here uh, I did notice when we went around a few of those corners that it really rolls on a lot and while the suspension is soft over those bumps and continuous undu undulations it really sort of rides a lot and doesn't feel confidence inspiring. If you're going on a family trip or something you've got a full load of people and you come across you know a mountain stretch or something like that everything about it just doesn't feel well sorted so yeah. i'll be keen to see how that compares sort of directly to that everest
So Trent, you're now secured in the back, mate. Mm -hmm. Hope you're enjoying it. We're about to go through our seesaw here. I preferred being up front just quietly. <laughs> <laughs> now the cool thing here, both cars have um, a graphical display and as I tip this car in, 22 degrees, 23. Yes on an angle there. Yep. How does that feel for you, mate? I would like a grab handle up in the roof like you had in the yes. Prada. Um, but in terms of comfort, very, very good back here considering that extreme angle. So you made me test the rigidity of the chassis on the Prado. It's only fair that you do the same door test here with the and Everest. We've got tyres in the air. It's open fine. Yep. Look at that. Nice and taut. That's very that impressive. That is very impressive. So it's worth mentioning that both of these are on a ladder frame chassis. It's quite impressive there that they're rigid enough to handle that terrain without too many dramas. I think the other thing to mention too, mate, is that the Everest's riding on 20 inch wheels and tyres and the yep. Prado's are more off-road biased. Yes, absolutely. So what the Everest can actually do off-road is pretty impressive, really. Well, yeah, it should be limited, especially when, when we get to these sections where we're dropping it into ditches that, that currently are reading 22 degrees. This car doesn't bottom out like the uh, Prado did on the entrance. No, it doesn't. It seems to ride a little higher. Yep. Super comfortable on that steep stuff back here, it has to be said. Very comfortable. And we're also not getting that um, tow bar hitting as much, which is interesting. Very good ground clearance for off-road work in this vehicle, that's for sure. This next section is, is tricky because we, uh, we left the Prado in high range and it gone up. Let's see what happens here on the Everest. It needed some throttle though, the Prado. Uh, the Everest doesn't want to know no about it. No matter what I'm doing there, we're not getting, getting anywhere. And so... that's partly tyres, as we mentioned before. Yep. That is so partly. what we'll do, instead of going into low range, I'll just try locking the rear differential, which is as easy as pushing a button. And uh, we'll, we'll try this again. Ah, look at that. Yeah, it's going to get up there. I mean, it's working a little harder, but it's not uncomfortable yep. by any means. So mate, as we go over these cobblestones towards our river crossing, how does it feel in the back there? Yeah, look, considering this is on 20 inch tires, it actually rides quite comfortably. Now you mentioned before that this has got a deeper wading rating than the Prado. So That's this right. should tackle the river crossing quite easily. That's right. So we've got 800 mil on offer here what we're wading through, so we'll drop that front end in. Again, we're not getting the, the back end bottoming out like we did in the Prado. Yeah, it's very gentle the way it enters, isn't it? And just on the throttle, and look at that. Nice and easy. I, I know that the Ranger is a capable car off-road, but that really proves that they've carried that forward yeah. and, and made this really the all-round package. It's definitely a tough off-roader. And I suspect it's going to be the same on the road. Country roads are the bread and butter of these cars, Trent, and I'm very comfortable behind the wheel. And the other thing I've noticed as well is that it is whisper quiet in here. Very, very impressive, the refinement in general. It's certainly quieter than the Prado. We suspected this would be a little firmer on the road than the Prado, and it is, we're right. But the payoff for that is that it's a lot better at handling. There's no claustrophobia, although it is a little smaller or it feels smaller back yep. here than the Prado just in general. Look, that could partly be due to that panoramic roof, but certainly from a driver's perspective, it doesn't feel anywhere near as cavernous. I think the reality though is that this is definitely the winner on the road. Oh, absolutely. It does everything well. The engine's quite responsive. The gearbox is lovely. It really just does tick all those boxes on road. We put both these cars through their paces today, both on and off road. The Prado did exactly what we expected it to do, feeling like it could tackle it any day of the week. What surprised us was just how well the Everest followed through with every single scenario. It's equally capable off-road and, with all its technology on board, more capable on it. The Prado might deservedly top the sales charts, but for a combination of on- and off-road ability and family-friendly packaging, the Everest takes the win. Chaps, welcome. What took you so long? I've been here all day. I've even got the uh, kettle on. What are you doing here? There's no tennis clubs around here, mate. Very funny, Paul. No, I've been watching you guys out there with uh, the SUVs today and it got me thinking. The fancy new Ford there is a $80,000 seven seat off-road capable, pretty comfy SUV. My Land Rover Discovery 4 here, around $80,000, seven seats, off-road capable, comfortable SUV. You can see where I'm going with this. So we've seen that the Everest and the Prado can both handle themselves out here in the bush, but how will the new Ford go on the way back to town and in a bit of the urban jungle. It sounds like we've got a comparison on our hands. Sure does, Paul. Hey, well, let's get packed up here and head back. Trent, coffee? To read the full review of the Everest taking on the Prado, click above. But if you want to see the Everest take on the Discovery, click below.